This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and I have Robert here with me. Uh, Robert, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much. So where the hell are we sitting right now, Robert? We're sitting in San Juan Seguidor. But uh, this is kind of like my favorite place to come down to the beach in the evening. And the Get Rec Sports Bar come down. They got me into rugby now. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And cricket, of all things. <laughs> so you're hanging out with Aussies and Yeah, Brits? I'm hanging out with Aussies. And, you know, there's quite a few Americans here, too. But, okay, okay. But uh, we come down here every Friday and Saturday and watch rugby. Yeah. It's an exciting game. That's great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like... It's like football for tough guys. There's no pads, no helmets. They're, they're, they're tough. They're tough. Yeah, they're real tough. Uh, when I I lived in India for almost three years, uh, and there was a group of Brits and Aussies and you know some New Zealanders, and they invited me to go with. But those were these guys were apes. There's no way I would yeah. have got no. got in there with them. And plus they were all in their 20s, and I was in my 40s. So yeah, no thanks. I'm not going there. <laughs> I understand that wholly. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so you got to Sikihor, sounds like, near the first of this year? Like I, no, January? last October. Oh, last October, okay. I got it October 7th. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> Sikihor Island in the Philippines. How the, how'd you end up here? I came here five years ago in 2018. Right. I met this girl online. Right. When I was, at, when I was home. I was living in Idaho at that time. Okay. And we just started chatting, and she was from here. Right. And... We just became good friends, and she just told me about the island, and I was really intrigued. She sent me a lot of pictures and everything, and just said, okay, uh, I really want to see that for my first time. Right. She set me up at this uh, restaurant slash, you know, resort right. named Marco Polo down right. the street. Okay. And I became really good friends with them, and just they just take you in like family. And ever since then, that's the first place I go. Wow. I know the owner for years. I know the manager for years and stuff like that. And they're just, you know, there's only two people that still work there that were there when I came. Right. But that was the first place I went, and then I started going to a different resort every day. Okay. And just dis discovered these different places. So it was enjoyable just to go to different places, meet all these different people. And then I was here for about a week. It was during Halloween. And, okay. And just before Halloween in 2018. And then I went to Dumaguete and I had a friend there. Yeah, Dumaguete is just across the water here. Yeah, it's just right over there. Like a one to two hour ferry, depending on how you take if the you slower. Take, if you though. take fast guide, it's 45 minutes. Okay, okay. Slow boats, hour and a half. Right, right. Went to Marco Polo and got my room. And in four days, I had an apartment. The cook at the Marco Polo that I'd known for, for a long time. Right. She goes, oh, there's an apartment next to my house. Wow. That's open. And she said, do you want, you know, I said, well, tell the landlady I want to come look at it. She says, no problem. So she gave me, you know, information and stuff, and I made an appointment, and I've been there ever since. Wow. 9000 a month. 9000 a month. Wow. And it's a modern apartment, one bedroom. Wow. And she bought me a stove and a refrigerator. That's, and that's like 180 Is that like right? $172. $172 a month. Wow. Yeah, wow. 172 bucks a month. Wow. And then you, what are your utilities for? I pay my electric... Depending upon, I've got to the acclimated now, so I don't run my air conditioner. When I first got in there, it was about 1300 Right. You know, a month. Right. But then I got acclimated, so I just sleep with a fan at night. Right, right. And I got it down to 700 Wow. Even 1300 is not... 1300 is not bad at all. Yeah, it's like 24 bucks or yeah. something? Yeah. For, for AC? Yep. Wow. And, and that then, includes your other, like your... Okay, go ahead. I'll yeah. Look. And then I pay three fifty water every month. You know, on top of that. Six dollars. Like, yeah, six dollars for water. Yeah. And I have a water station refilling place across the street. Right. 25 pesos for a 20 liter jug. Right. Those are the size jugs we have in the U.S. Yeah. I think they call them five gallons. And yeah, they're five gallons of them. Yeah. And so that's 50 cents. Yeah, 50 cents. Yeah. You know. Right. So not even that. It, it's uh, 25. It's, what is it? Oh, yeah, it is like 50 cents. You're correct. Is it a one-bedroom house? or One-bedroom. One-bedroom, one-bath, kitchen? Yeah. Like a little living area? Or? Yeah, it's, it's got a living and kitchen together. Wow. And the, the counter space is over here very small. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I got a two-burner stove, gas stove. I want a gas. You know, right, of course. And uh, just one sink. And then and it doesn't have cupboards is the only thing. Right. Just down below. Yeah, down below. And so it just got a storage thing there that I just 
you know, like shelves and stuff right, like that right, that I right, put stuff right. on. Yeah. But it's just me, so I don't need that much. Yeah, yeah. And hot shower, of course. Right. Oh, nice, nice. And the only thing I had to do was buy a shower curtain. Didn't come with a shower curtain. Okay. I got that in Yeti. <laughs> but that was, because, you know, you just, when you get out, you don't want to step on a wet floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's kind <laughs> of a pain in the butt. Yeah, know? exactly. But I got it all dialed in now, and it came furnished. Had a bed. Wow. I had cabinets. I got a, a, a big cabinet in the bedroom and one in the front room. Had, had a, a brown, little brown chair, like, you know, lounge chair. Yeah, yeah. Not a recliner or anything. Came with a table and four chairs. Right. And she gave me two chairs. I sit outside a lot. Right. Take my laptop outside and sit on the patio. Nice. nice. And just, and I bought, one of the most important things was a solar-powered fan. Solar-powered fan. Yes. Wow. And when I sit outside, I just sit it there on the porch, run my fan all day, and I'm not using electricity. Wow. Very nice. And I, I got the cord long enough, I can take it in the house. Underneath my door, my door's got a gap like that. You right. Know, geckos right. go through there all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I just sit it in the house, I'm not using electricity. And you got to be wise to unplug everything if you're not using it. Yeah, because of the power surge? That's how you save electricity. Right. Don't leave anything plugged in. People, a lot of people don't know that. They just leave stuff plugged in and, yeah. and everything. It's still drawing power. All over Southeast Asia, you know. uh, people unplug stuff. We, yeah. You know where we're from, the U.S., nobody yeah. unplugs anything. I know. Yeah, but I, but I didn't realize it was drawing when it was off. That's, oh, yeah, it that's, does. That's great information. Yeah, it does draw when it's off. Like, especially, I unplug my computer uh, every time I'm not using it. I have a laptop, and I unplug it every time I'm not using it. Because right, that little right. thing, that little box there, that's sucking power. Oh, yeah, the little charger. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's so, sucking power all the time. So this is one of the most uh, beautiful, in my opinion, islands in the Philippines. And it's also not as, I don't know, I'll call it commercialized as some of the other islands, like Penglao or Boracay. It's mm -hmm. like more country feeling, if you will. Yeah. Uh, a lot of white sand beaches around, like t turquoise waterfalls. I mean, it's a beautiful place. Um, and so, um, what is that, is that information you knew and decided to come here right from the start? Or you, have you been to other parts of the Philippines? Uh, no, I have not. I've only been to Cebu. I've been to parts of Cebu. Okay. And I kind of explored there up towards Mualba and up through the mountains. Yeah, sure. Took a bike up through the mountains and kind of checked that out. Yeah. And mostly just in Cebu. Went to Oslob, did the whale shark yeah, thing. Yeah, the whale shark thing, yeah. And that was pretty cool. I made a video about that years ago. You kind of got lucky finding out about this place. Oh, I, I mean, super you've lucky. only done a few, looked at a few places. So, so it's amazing. So, what would you say in your typical month that you spend spend per month to live here? Okay, probably with my 9,000 base of rent, right. 350 water, and let's say on average at the most 1,200 electric. Right. And then I pay, I got the best high-speed internet. Okay. Fiber. We have fiber right along the highway. Right. So I, I pay 40 bucks a month for that. Wow, that's great. But for the stuff that I do, it's, it's, it's better. Yeah. And that's it. So what about restaurants and grocery stores? What do you spend on restaurants and grocery stores? Okay, I spend about probably 3000 Because there's two stores here. One's the Island Deli that has imported food. Right. And the other one's called Belly Full. Right. It's further down the road. Right. And north, more to north. And I go get my Western stuff there. Right. Like the other day at Belly Full, I scored a kilo of smoked bacon. Right. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. it was a little spendy. You, you, once in a while, you just gotta have that. Sure, that comfort little treat, that comfort, comfort food. food yeah. And plus, they have German bratwurst. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get into my history in Germany. I lived in Germany in the army for s seven years. Oh, cool. Yeah. So a fun place. I love German food. Yeah. And it turns out there's three German restaurants on sea. Wow. Imagine that. There's chill out. Sigur in Lorena, and the guy has a smoked sausage shop. Right. So he makes it. He makes his own. Right. And you can go there and put your order in, and then just go pick it up. 
right, when right, it's ready. Right. And then there's one down by the Belit tree. And he's gone right now back to Germany. Right. And he'll be back in September. And in Lazi is the 24 Cafe. He makes German bread. Right. <laughs> so I'm set. <laughs> so what do you think is, what would you guess on average you spend for groceries uh, both in the open air market from and, there, and then your probably comfort, the, I, comfort food I, I too? I buy all my vegetables from the open air markets. Right, right. Because I can get enough for, like for a whole week, probably for 300 pesos. Wow, wow. wow. For a whole week. Right. right. You know, because I can get my potatoes, get my onions. Right. And so you're talking like five dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, for a whole week right. of vegetables. Right. And I mix those with, uh, pretty much. I bought it. They got these blocks of panzit noodles. Right. And you just break off a little bit, put it in there, <laughs> chop up all your vegetables, and you throw it in there, and you you cook all that together, and you got a <laughs> delicious wholesome meal. Huh? See, I'm kind of like you. I don't eat a lot of meat. Right. I just do chicken and fish mostly. Yeah. And red meat, if I eat a hamburger like three or four times a year. Oh, wow. You know, I quit doing that years ago because I just knew that's why I have, at 67 years old, I have no high blood cholesterol. Oh, nice. No high blood pressure. Right. And I was married to a vegetarian. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you. you so I learned all this back in the <laughs> 80s. <laughs> so you don't have all the plaque on the inside yeah, of your arteries. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I learned how to change my diet, and it probably saved my life. Oh, wow. that's great. I take absolutely no medications. So what, what would you say, that's uh, great information. Um, and then what would you say then, if you combine the two, both your, your comfort foods and your, what, just guess for a month, what would you say you're spending? Um, 100 bucks. 100 bucks for your food for a month? Yeah. That's really good. Wow. That's great. You know, it, the, the secret to it is, is cooking yourself. Like that's, that's I do my West, I do my Western breakfast yeah. and my pancakes, eggs, and bacon in the morning. Right. Okay. And what takes 15 minutes to make? Right. Every day. Yeah. And they have. I buy my Western peanut butter, <laughs> and of course I love Nutella. Right. And bread here is so cheap. Yeah. You know to make toast. And so that's pretty much my favorite meal of the day, you know, my Western yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, I just have one. I only eat a couple times a day. Right. And then I make a good afternoon, like I did the pans at Canton or something like that. Or sometimes I'll go out and get, like, chop suey here to get wrecked. Right. And I can eat that for two days. Oh, they give you so it, much. It's two, it's like 220. Yeah. And I can eat that for two days. Yeah, that's the other thing. The, the 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 local portions. the portions of a, a Western expects is really large. Right. And so if you go into a Western style bar or restaurant, they're going to give you what you expect at home. Right. And and once you start eating more like the Asians do, those are two meals, not one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I've got to the point where I don't gorge myself. Yeah. I see some of these people; they just down the whole thing, and I'm just going, "Oh, I would have to go home, and go to bed." Yeah. Yeah. Sleep it off. I couldn't do that. It yeah, would just yeah. be out. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I pretty much know that I'm going to take it home, and I'm going to eat till I'm full. Right. And then take the rest. Take home. the rest home. And so, so 100 bucks for groceries. What do you think you spend on um, if you go out and have uh, restaurant meals? Like, uh, what do you think you spend per month on average for restaurants? When I first got here, it was probably. Uh, 250. 250 bucks. Yeah, to about 250 bucks going right. out to eat. Yeah. Because I was trying new new places. Sure, there was, sure. There's so many new places that opened. Yeah. So I wanted to go see which. Fi you wanted to find your best. favorites. Yeah, I wanted to find my favorites. Yeah, so you don't waste your time. After and that. so once I did that, yeah. Then I pretty much only go maybe once a week. Okay. So like one night a week? Yeah, just kind of like one night a week. And now you know where to go because you've tried it all. Right. I just yeah. go to one place I like, then the next week I'll go to another place. Right. And I found out the places for entertainment because I like to listen to live music. Live. So what are the places for entertainment? Then I'll bring you okay. back to restaurants. Uh, JJ's is Friday night. Right. And they have usually two bands. Okay. And I only stay till 10 because it gets so packed. Right. I'm... Um, 
one night he had a thousand people in there. Wow, wow. Right on the beach. Yeah. But the young kids come in. Right, right. And stuff like that. So I get the heck out of there because you can't even get up to the bar and okay. have a beer. Okay. And so it's time for me to leave. And then the other place, my friend's band plays at the Dogs uh, on Sunday nights. Okay. And sometimes Wednesdays. And the other place is out by the airport. It's called The Runway. Okay. And they have like a couple bands too on, on Saturdays. On Saturday nights. And there's one called Sunnyland. It's up on the mountain. Okay. It, it's a little bit difficult to find. Beautiful venue. I mean, it's like going to an outdoor concert. Oh, wow. And, but you, you, I'd recommend if you want to go there, go in the daytime and find it. Okay. Because you're going to be coming back at night. Yeah. It's a good, and, good idea. And it's, uh, they usually have pretty good entertainment. They, so those are some great tips for new people. And, and other than I come down and get wrecked to watch sports. Yeah. Because that's really inexpensive entertainment. Okay. Because I'm a big sports nut anyway. So. Right, right. Uh, Two fifty the first month or so you were here per month, and now what are you spending now for restaurants? Oh, probably <laughs> 50 bucks, maybe. Wow. That's nothing. Your cost of living is very cheap. Yeah, really cheap. Yeah. I, I just yeah, like, because yeah. I only go out, like I say, once or twice a week. Right. Do, do you also get, and do you have like, um, do you have? Do you buy some kind of health care, or back in the states, do you buy health care, or what other expenses do you have? Your phone, I guess. Uh, My phone is. Uh, I have. I have Smart here. Right. And it's like probably 150 a week. Right. 150 weeks. So. Yeah. No. About 600. 600. So like 12 bucks a month. They They say it's a seven-day plan. Yeah. Right. But I don't call anybody. I don't get on the internet on my phone <laughs> like people do. Yeah. So it usually lasts me two weeks. Nice. Until it finally says, except during the brownout when I have to get on and use my data. Yeah, of course. Then when, when it's, it's your hot spot. You know, yeah. Yeah. And then when I run out of data, then I go get another hundred and forty nine dollar plan. Right. Hundred and forty nine right. peso plan. Right, right. Yeah. So so what do you think you're uh, since you 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 lived here now since October, what would you say uh, just a general number that you spend per month, roughly? What do you think you spend per month here? Including everything. Well, if I budget properly, I'd probably spend six hundred. Six hundred dollars. That's crazy. That's crazy. What if you splurge yeah. one month? You know, not like buying a car, but you know, if you go out a few more times, you're dating a, a new girl or something. What do you would you say? Maybe see? eight. Eight. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. And well, that's after paid bills. Right. Because I make thirteen hundred. Right. And after I pay my bills and everything. Then I have like uh, 800 to play with. Right. And I try to, that's why I try to stay at six. I see. And save that 200. Okay, so after, you know, you, after those set bills, you right. have eight left over. Have eight left over, yeah. And you try to only spend six of it. Right. That so, way it's. Uh, so, you're, so you're all in, you're spending less than a thousand a month, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's great. It's amazing. And it, it's easy to do, you just have to be disciplined. So now you've been here since October. Have you decided to do any like dating, online dating, or that kind of thing? Have you um, done any of that? I've dated three girls so far. Okay. Here. Yeah. On the island. And one was just kind of, I met her in Dumaguete when I was staying there when I first got here. Right. And she came over and helped me get set up. Right. And kind of helped me navigate everything and did the translations for me and get everything done. Right. And then after that, she had a, she's from Bacolod. Okay. And so she had a daughter there, so she went back to Bacolod. Okay. And then after that, uh, about, I just decided I don't want to date. Right. I just want to get used to where I'm living. Right, right. And that's what I think everybody should do. Start out with that? Start out with that. Don't be in a hurry. Right. Okay. I'm not a player. I'm not looking for anybody. Just, just take it easy. If it's going to happen, it'll come to you. Right, right. And that's been the that's been the truth. The two girls I've dated came to me. Nice. And I wasn't looking. Yeah. And I just that's a word to the wise people. Just the more you search, you're not going to find a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's that good one that comes out of the woodwork. My, my mom, when I was a teenager and I was between girlfriends or whatever, and she would say. As soon as you quit looking, one will show up. 
And that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that years ago. I learned that years ago. So. Yeah, it was true. And, Just out of nowhere. And all the locals had asked me, are you married? I said, no, I'm not married. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I have a sister. I have a cousin. <laughs> what do you say to that? You know, I say, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. No, thank you. I'm not looking. So the two you've met, are they, uh, did they come up to you in a market or how, well, how did that? It was, happen? the first one was, message me on Facebook. Right. She's a masseuse. Okay. Really good massage therapist. Yeah. Um, I had a really stiff neck and sore and I think it was from traveling and right. this kind of was a lingering pain yeah yeah and and she just knocked it out next day it was done great oh. great is she from here and, yeah yeah she yeah she's was born and raised here yeah. Oh. yeah and so that was then we started dating after that and we went about four months and it got to the point where I didn't want to be her ATM machine any longer. Okay. <laughs> she expected me to support her family. Okay. Because she's from the province right. in Tamasan. Yeah. And I just got to the point where I says, listen, uh, I'm not going to support your family. Yeah. I don't mind you buying a bag of rice or something like that. Yeah. You know, once in a while to help you guys over. But there's like seven kids there. Yeah. And two, you know, her parents. And her brother's supposed to be working in Cebu, taking, sending money, but right, that right. didn't happen very often. Okay. And so I just kind of ended that. Right. And I did buy a scooter, and I was letting her use it to, to work. Right. So she could work and support her family. Yeah. And that didn't work out too good either. She said, oh, I will pay you for it. I will pay it. Never got any money. Yeah. You know. Then she crashed it. Oh, boy. And so I took it back, fixed it, you know, just cosmetic right, damage. Right. Except the frame was bent. I had to go get that straightened out. Wow. I did a whole video on that. Okay. <laughs> Bike repair. It was yeah. amazing how they do it. By the way, uh, Robert has a channel. We'll put a link to it below. If you're interested in uh, hearing more of his story or more about Siki Hor or his travels, we, we'll talk more about that, but that will be a link below. But anyway, so you yeah. got the bike back. Got the bike back. And you have a van too, don't you? Like yeah, a, I have a, it's a Suzuki double cab. Okay. It's like a little pickup. Yeah. Four door. Right. It's two sliding doors in the back. Great big back seat. Yeah, what is something like that's new or used? It was used. Looks nice. Well, I got it for two thousand dollars. Wow. One hundred thirty-five k. Wow, that's nice. And there's a sky. Probably down good on gas too. I would think. And four-wheel drive. Wow. Five-speed. Wow. It's perfect for here. That's my girlfriend now that is living with me now. She's just this greatest little housekeeper and and companion. And I'm, I'm teaching her better English because she's working on that a little bit. And I found out last night how good she is in math. And a couple times she's corrected me. Okay, okay. And she's a whiz at math. <laughs> like doing change and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And she says, oh, I was a cashier down in Minnow at my aunt's place. Oh, okay. And she's just sharp as, sharp as a tack nice. when it comes to math. So she's handy to have around. And she's just a sweetheart. Wh where'd you meet her, this one? Uh, I was sitting in the get wrecked. Okay. And I just, she came in, was sitting next to me, and I said hello, and then we started talking. Right. Uh -huh. And then we went out. I see. And then after that, we just dated. Yeah. After that, she's four foot eight, a little shorty. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just a sweetheart. How old is she? 31. 31, wow. okay. And you're 60? 67. 67, yeah. How long are you all together? Oh, just a month now. Been dating a month now. Yeah. yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. Lovely story. Yeah. I mean, just go to the bar and. <laughs> well, that's why I said it comes to you. Yeah. And so before October, um, before you came uh, to the Philippines, um, you had also spent some time in Mexico. Is that right? That was during the. I had all my plans to come to the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't bought a ticket. Right. In March. Of. 2020. Uh, 2020. The beginning. The very and then, I heard it closed. Yeah. So I said, oh, no. And so I got online and started researching South America. Right. Because I always, always wanted to go to Colombia. Yeah, yeah. And so I get three hotel reservations in Bogota, Medellin, and Santa Clara, and Cartagena. Yeah, yeah. And had my trip all, I even met a gal that was from down there, online yeah. dating. Yeah. She was going to meet me in Bogota and then travel with me. Right, I'm right. saying, oh, this is going to be so much fun. Yeah. I know a little Spanish. I'm not fluent. Right, right. 
by any means, but oh, I had everything all set up and I hadn't bought my ticket yet. Right. Two weeks before I came, they locked the country down. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm back to the square one. <laughs> and at that time you were in Idaho? I was living in Idaho. Right, right. Yeah, in central Idaho. So couldn't go to Colombia? So I couldn't go to Colombia, so I said, I'm going to Mexico. Okay. It was open. Yeah. They don't, no PCR test. Nothing. Nothing to get there. No questions. And I'd, I'd met, I'd, so I did a little online dating there too, and I met this nice gal from Corretero. Corretero, yeah, I love that city. And it was just, boom, came right in. Yeah. I said, that's it. Because I'm into history. Yeah. And that is one of the oldest, oldest towns. Yeah. And I started reading about it. And I says, yep, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That yeah, was a very important part of the uh, revolution from Spain. It was, yeah. correct. Yeah. And what a beautiful town it is. And every day I go out and do a video and just explore. Right, right. And all these videos are on your channel. Yeah, they're on my channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of them from Mexico. Right. From right. Corretero. I went to Historica. Okay. You know, Central Historica. Cathedral. Right where the main park is. Yeah. With St. Francis is across the street. Yeah, yeah. And I was just down from the park. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a great location. And it was just half a block. Wow. To, to go out and head out. It's one of the most beautiful places and in the world. I met the nicest people. Oh. And more of the young ones spoke English of course. than the older ones. Of course, yeah. But I had Google Translate. Right. Yeah. And so I can navigate everywhere you want to go. Yeah, we do that too. And found these little mom and pop places. Yeah. I, when I was walking around, I would notice people standing in line at places. Right. I said, well, I'll come back here. Yeah, of course. I'd find these little sandwich shops. Yeah. And these little delicatessens and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And little pizza joints. Yeah. And that's what I recommend to people. Look for where there's a lot of people. Exactly. Locals. exactly. All, all, over all over the world. All over the world, no matter secret. where you go. That's a secret. If you see a lot of locals in that place, yeah. that's where you want to go. Exactly. Because that's going to be the best food. Yeah. It's going to be affordable. Yeah. And it's going to be very good. Yeah. And, and if it's once they're online and they got a lot of reviews and all the stars and everything, they might still be cheap, but not necessarily. But if you find those little mom and pop places mm -hmm. with a line out front, that's where you're probably going to get a better price. You get really high quality because they're attracting locals which don't have the higher income. So exactly. Yeah. That's a great tip. Um, Especially in Mexico, you, there was no bad food. <laughs> so how long were you in Corretero? I was there for 24 days. Okay, okay. Uh, see, when I traveled, I took, I had four weeks vacation from my work. Right. So I'd you were working the whole at thing. that time. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I was retired, I was working. Okay. And, but I had, I had to scale back to four days because of the 17,000 limit. Oh, oh for, because now you were drawing, you, you, were, you were drawing Social yeah. Security. I retired at 62. Okay. Yeah. And so I was limited to that. <laughs> my boss told me, you're the first employee that asked me to reduce your wages. <laughs> I had to because he gave us so many bonuses. Yeah, yeah. If we hit a certain mark, uh, money-wise, yeah. in profit, we would get a $150 bonus or a $100 bonus. Right. But I found out that they weren't accountable to Social Security. Oh. The so bonuses are not. The bonus are not or paid vacation. Okay. Doesn't count against you. Right. But every year I'd get a letter from Social Security Oh, you're over this much. You have to repay this, and so I'd have to get all save all my pay stubs and go down to Social Security and show them they were bonuses and not. show them they were bonuses and paid vacation. <gasps> you know, it was like it, it was better than having to pay back. But uh, back to Corretero, yeah, it was just I found an Irish pub there. <laughs> Every town in the I world. Went has there, an Irish pub. I went there. I went there. <laughs> as often as I possibly could when yeah. I was on that part of town. Yeah, yeah. And my sister had asked me to get this. She's 10 years older than me, and, and she had a problem with her knee. Right. And she said this medicine that she got before was 70 bucks in the U.S. Right. For a month. Yeah. I bought it for $5 in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For yeah. a month? For a month. Yeah. It's crazy the, the way that the, I'm sorry, but the way the U.S. government treats its citizens, I mean, it, it, especially their older citizens, right? Mm -hmm. Your sister? Yeah. Imagine they're charging 70 but uh, but in Mexico it's $5. Why, why are these, why is that allowed to go on? And it's annoying, in my opinion. It I, is. Because it, it, it drives me crazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, 
Um, uh, so what do you think? Uh, it sounds like um, you enjoyed Coretro, but for living, which one do you like better? you like it better here, or do you like it better there? It was a toss-up. Okay. Uh, if the Philippines hadn't opened when it did, yeah. I was going to live in Coretro for a year. Okay, you're going to go back after you I retired. had connections. I see. Yeah. I had already set up apartment, right. you know, connections and yeah. things like yeah. that. I had yeah. friends down there established, and I was going to go down there, and I was, and I was going to drive my truck down there. Right, right. You know, I could just, yeah. I'd have instant vehicle. Right. Yeah, you can just drive right over the border. And I was planning, I had all this stuff worked <laughs> out. I was doing all this, you know, watching the expats and stuff down there. Yeah. Uh, different channels. Yeah. And I, I was starting to get all this stuff ready and everything, then the Philippines opened. Right, right. But my heart was here in Sigur. Okay. I says, okay, I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go check it out. Right, right. That's great. And I contacted my friends here and everything, and they said, okay, don't worry, when you get here, we'll help you. And sure enough, it all just worked out perfectly. So would you say you're, um, maybe another way to ask you is, were you spending more per month in Corretoro, and if so, how much? Or are you spending more here, and if so, how much? On vacation. Just total. Well, actually, on, oh, on vacation is different. On vacation is different than yeah, actually living. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Right. But yeah. I, was, I was very careful. These places that I found was, I budgeted myself because I knew I was going to be there for a long time. Right, right. And what I would do is on my vacations is I would plan to have a payday hit in the middle. Right. You know, for my <laughs> paid vacation. Yeah, yeah. And my Social Security check hit before I came home. Right. <laughs> so I, I went with money to begin with. Right. And then I had another payday coming and then one before I left. Right. <laughs> and that's how I planned my vacations. And that way I, you wouldn't run out of money. Right, right. But I found these restaurants where, God, I could eat for nothing. Yeah. One was called 2550, uh, 25 Dias, and there was a girl from Chicago worked there. She was Mexican that had moved and wanted to live in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. It's all perfect English and everything, and, and uh, I'm just going, this is, and they had three different types of tacos. Right. 25 pesos a piece. Wow. For, for the dish. Yeah, yeah. And it came with a little salad for and all three, three tacos. Oh, no, wow. for just one. Each taco, yeah. But I tried. There was fish tacos, shrimp tacos, and then the meat tacos. Right, right. I just do a different one every day. Yeah, yeah. And then if, if there was this other little mom-pop place I found. The sandwiches there, you don't get anything unless they're that big around. And I found this one little store in the morning. I'd walk down towards there. And these two little sisters had this little, sh they would cook it right in front of you and make you this sandwich. That was breakfast and dinner. You or, cut it, or cut it and lunch. Your, yeah, yeah. And it was like 50 pesos. Wow. That's great. You know, for like two and a half, 250. Yeah. And yeah. I had two meals. Yeah, yeah. And so I found all these different places that had these kind of deals and I just kind of used them every day. Yeah, yeah. Spoke English. Yeah. In the nicer places. Right, right. It's true. And I treated myself a couple times. I didn't, but uh, I was walking like four kilometers a day. Yeah. Going around to see everything. Yeah. And that's at a higher elevation, so it's yeah, cooler. Yeah, it's 5,300 feet. That's so it's a mile high. Yeah. And it's cooler. So you must, yeah, it's, yeah. that's the thing. People always think of Mexico as just a bunch of beaches. Mm -hmm. But the center of it is all these beautiful cities that were built during the colonial era because they didn't have air conditioning. So they're high in the air. Yeah. Beautiful buildings, architecture, cobblestone streets, mm -hmm. all through the center of Mexico. It's just an amazing it, place. Yeah, amazing place. And it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just like everybody thinks it's desert like the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not. <laughs> no. It's beautiful it's around beautiful, that yeah. area. On your channel, people would be curious, if they go over there, what, are they, what, what kind of things do you like to make movies about? Or videos, I should say. I do kind of like a record of places like visit. Okay. I'm a great storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to sit down and tell stories. But I like to help people out also when, you know, I meet this guy coming today from Dumaguete, and it's his first time in Sigur, so... We hop in the truck and go. Yeah. I says, where do you want to go see? <laughs> and I like, and it's just, so I like to make videos about that, you know, helping people out. Yeah. And sharing, you know, their trip also, because I can give them the video. Right, right. And then they'll have record of what they did. Exactly. So people can contact you if they're coming over here and you'll meet with them? Certainly. Well, Robert, 
thanks for coming on the channel and telling your story. I'm sure it'll help people that are coming over here to find out information. And it's nice that you, uh, you know, when people come, they can send you a message or and uh, and if you have time, you'll meet with them. That's quite a nice. Just, just PM me on Facebook, send a friend request. I usually look and then send a short message with it, and I'll pick you up at the port. Wow. Well, and I hope you find a room if you haven't already booked one. I know all the good places to go to get you settled in. And then from there on, if, if you want to go do something, rent a scooter yourself, I have connections for that. Yeah. I know that my friends at near where Coke Grove where I live, they give you a discounted price if you're my friend. Right. Well, thank, thanks so much, Robert. You bet. Thank you. And it's, you know something? This is really an honor for me because, and I always found uh, your channel so intriguing. And also your hobo adventures. Thank yeah. you so much. I mean, I watch you all the time, too. <laughs> because you're one of the few females that really explains things well. And you have a unique perspective. Yeah, she does. On your channel. And it's, I really enjoy it Thank very you so much. much. But you just, even if you're talking about some other countries, I like hearing those stories, too. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been in so many places. <laughs> yeah, we and, do. And I've always dreamt about going to some places and... And it's just fun to experience someone else's journey there. Yeah. And you do a great job showing pictures and things like that. And you got such a nice narrative voice. I never get tired of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I wake up every day and I say, thank you, God. I live in paradise.